Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Staff Gymnasium, home of your Brockton Boxers. And today, it's a big three-divisional battle as the Durfee Hilltoppers make the trip north from Fall River to face the Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. I will be joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, because every big three-divisional matchup is a big game. Durfee with a number of big players on the court. They are led by the starting quarterback of the football team, number five, Nick Salmon and Shaheem Van Putin. Brockton, on the other hand, Nabil Ferbler, Karan Harris, Abu Kaba, Etanosa Kunbor, and Demarge Taylor, the normal five starters for the boxers. It is Isaiah Morenci in against Etanosa Kumbor for the opening tip. Brockton winning that tip, and immediately it will be a backcourt violation against the Boxers. Chayton Nera, the running back of the football team, inbounds for A.B. Medrano. Nick Salmon on the putback attempt, and Abu Kaba coming down with the rebound. And we are now joined by hey, the not so newly named athletic director, Kevin Caro. Mr. Caro getting into the television broadcasting world a little bit. So Mr. Caro, right off the bat, big three divisional matchup. Good crowd, good noise in the gym. Cheerleaders are in full effect. Yeah, we brought the mascot out tonight too. First time all year. And he's having fun. that how they start really kind of dictates how the rest of the game goes so they need to make these first couple shots get their confidence up and um, if that happens then we're feeling pretty good well, 44 seconds in still scoreless Karan Harris is at the line for two shots Go, Pops, missing his first Durfee wearing their away all red jerseys, red shorts, black trim with white outlines around the numbers. Nabil Ferbler for three, in and out. Abu Kaba with the rebound. Flings it to Atenosa Kumbor. ET over to Demarge Taylor, over to Ferbler. Back to Taylor. Taylor now for Harris. His three is no good. And Durfee coming down with this rebound. That's kind of what I talked about, is that they need to make those first couple of shots and somebody kind of has to step up. Nara blocked from behind by E.T. and he will be at the line for two shots. Brockton, on the other hand, is wearing their home white jerseys that you had a little part of getting. Black stripes down the side of the shorts. Yeah, those are good looking uniforms, I would say. Not too much red. Just Not enough. too much black. They're good. Durfee takes first blood, the first charity stripe attempt. Good by Chayton Nera, he goes two for two. Two to nothing, the Hilltoppers on top of the boxers. Nabil Ferbler trying to change that. Demarge Taylor overhands it in to paint for Abu Kaba off the glass, no good. Karan Harris bobbling the rebound. He was fouled by Chayton Nera, called for the push. Demarge Taylor over to Karan Harris, back to Taylor. To Ferbler, looks like it could have hit the line out of bounds, but the refs didn't see it, so it didn't happen. <laughs> Taylor driving baseline, puts up a wild floater off the back of the rim, no good. Gets his own rebound. Up to the top to Ferbler, Karan Harris now. Harris to Kaba, and he's called oh, for boy. the travel. And Durfee takes over on downs. It's just... Somebody has to make that first shot. We're just waiting for it to happen, just to kind of get the monkey off the back and get things rolling here. Number 15, A.B. Medrano with it. It rolls out of bounds off of Brockton. So two to nothing in even two minutes into the first quarter. Brockton yet to score. A push now called against number 15. That is A.B. Medrano, the sophomore guard. Kaba in for Demarge Taylor. Taylor to Ferbler, had some room. Karan Harris 
Back to Taylor at the top. Taylor to Ferbler, creating some space. Back to Taylor. Driving inside, puts it off, off the glass. No good. Hey. Tapped in by Antonos and Kuhnborg. Brockton's on the board. Nero over to Isaiah Morenci. Morenci to Van Puten, and he is fouled. Two to two, the score, 526 remaining in the first quarter. A, an electric game shaping up here at Staff Gymnasium. I don't know if I'm at the gym or over at the rink with the score being 2-2 in the first period. <laughs> Well, if it was over at the rink <laughs> between these two teams, it'd be more like 12, 13 to nothing. <laughs> Shaden Nera good for two. <laughs> Nil and Nera into the game for the Hilltoppers. His brother Shaden coming down off the rebound. Nil and with it now. He hands to Van Puten. Van Puten. In for Nera, his floater no good. Antonosa Kumbor coming down with the rebound. This is what DJ, he just needs to just slow down and relax. Don't try to do everything on his own. Pass it around. That's oh, a big three. Kron Harris off the glass on the putback attempt. No good, gets his own rebound. This loose ball is picked up by Van Puten and a travel called against that Hilltopper. And Bill Ferbler to put this ball in play. Harris pump fake for three. Over to Ferbler to Taylor at the top of the key. Back to Ferbler. He takes a rainbow shot three. That's no good. Abu Kaba with the offensive board. And he lays it up and in. Slow start for the Brockton Boxers, but the same can be yeah. said on the other end of the hardwood. <laughs> It's just a good thing that they haven't really gotten onto a run because we'd be in a pretty big hole right now. Isaiah Morenci good from under the bucket for two. Six to four the score. And all tied up back at 10. Demarge Taylor with the layup off the glass and in. A couple of boxers getting ready to come into the game. It looks like Tariq Yaya and Marcino Louis Charles. Oh. I think we got away with one over the back there. Nera to Salmon, Salmon back to Nera. His three is good. Nine to six the score now. Taylor to Ferbler, Ferbler to Taylor. He takes a three from right up top and that's good. Anything you can do, I can do better, says Demarge Taylor, and we are all tied up at nine. Shaden Nera to Nick Salmon. Salmon working against Karan Harris. Stutter steps, he puts up a long two, no good. Abu Kaba comes down with the rebound. Brockton throws this one out of bounds, and wholesale substitutions yeah. as the B team comes in, Precious Oko, Tajan Glendardi, Sonny Oak and Lola, and Tariq Yaya in the game. Yeah, and I just think that what Coach Bowen's trying to do is just trying to find the right mix of kids. And I mean, we do have a young squad out here. And hopefully when, when it comes tournament time, he'll just kind of know where all the moving pieces are so we can put our best lineup out. Nick Salmon counted and won. Tariq Yaya called for the push. And Nick Salmon at the line to try to convert three points the old fashioned way. And does just that. 12 to nine the score, Hilltoppers on top of the boxers. Taylor looking hard in for Precious Oka. Back to Taylor. Over to Yaya. Back to Taylor. Yaya for three is no good. Glenn Darty fighting for the rebound against three Hilltoppers. And it's out of bounds, and they're going to rule it off of Tajon Glenn Darty. Durfee ball. And, and there's a perfect case in which, you know, we don't see it as much as where kids follow their shot. 
I just don't see a lot of it. They expect it that when they shoot it, it's going in. Uh, and so many times it doesn't, and they're not in position to get their own. Oh, it's been the rent of the year following your shots. Jaden Nair for three, does not follow his shot. Glenn Darty uh -oh. comes down with the uncontested rebound. Oh, that should be a travel. He slid about 15 feet on the floor. I was gonna call him safe at second base. <laughs> Looked like he was going to take out a double play. A kickball finally called. Marcinal Louis Charles in for Tariq Yaya. And the refs with a little bit of an explanation. I'd like head coach to, I, Bob Bowen. I, I, I'd love one too. Maybe he didn't have possession. Recovering the fumble. Taken. And a travel called against Durfee. One would wonder why you just wouldn't let them play on. Brockton had the ball. On it goes. Taylor to Louis Charles, back to Taylor to Oak and Lola, back to Taylor. Back to Louis Charles, back to Taylor. Louis Charles for three is good. And that's one of the things that I've noticed that they've been working on in practice is Less dribbling, more passing, shifting the defense around so they'll get that open guy. And I think that's real important. A lot of times I've seen guys, they dribble and they look fancy and they go between their legs and around the back and they don't go anywhere. Oh. Oh, go for Glenn Dart. He can't handle the pass that had some Chinese mustard on it. Sam in the other way loses it. No foul called. Shaden Nera now working into the paint. He loses it. It's picked up by Oko, who flings it to Glenn Darty, who goes all oh. the way in. And he was fouled on the way up by number 31. Yeah, that play before I may have found a pitcher for the baseball team. He really, he brought that pretty hot. Glenn Darty at the line for two shots. Short on his first attempt. Abu Kawa back into the game. He replaces Demarge Taylor. Glenn Darty for the first boxer lead of the night, 13 to 12. Boxers on top of the Hilltoppers. Chayton Nero oh, looking he went to change he went that. Lane to, oh, coast to coast. And counted and no, in one for Chayton Nara. Nobody came in to help out. Louis Charles called for the hit. So Chayton Nara to three points the old fashioned way. 15 to 13, Hilltoppers back on top. Sunny Oak and Lola. And there's our mascot. Season the sidelines. Season debut. Brockton holding on for a last shot. All right, don't hold on to it too long. Elk going for Glenn Darty, and he loses it to number 22, Neil and Nera. To his brother, Chayton, misses the shot. Buzzer sounds. The score at the end of the first quarter, 15 to 13. I wouldn't really say highly contested or competitive, um, but. It's only I'm a just going to use the game. word sloppy. <laughs> a sloppy first quarter. Perfect summarization. Yeah. A lot of loose balls. And it looks like I'm being relieved of my duty, but I appreciate you having me here. You're more than welcome to pop by. We're going to hear yeah. from Kingsley Ajoku DK a little bit later on. Nice. Of course, one of when the. When I hear things over to um, your partner in crime over here. Big game, Miles Jackson. Thank Mr. Kevin Caro for spotting us the first quarter. But now it's game time. Big game, Miles Jackson in the house. Second quarter, almost underway, 15 to 13. Miles, Mr. Caro said it perfectly, sloppy first quarter. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's a big three game, so both teams are a little nervous, and I'm sure they'll get going here in the second quarter. Uh, hopefully it'll be the uh, boxers. So 
go. 15 to 13, Hilltoppers on top of the boxers. Neil and Nera. To put this one in play, looking for his brother Chayton. Chayton to number 14, Joe Camara. Another football player. Louis Charles comes up with a loose ball and stepped out of bounds. It will be a Durfee ball with a fresh shot clock. Well, it looks like they're playing man to man, or so they feel comfortable with who they're playing with. Kamara stopping in the paint, looking to go to number 25, Tijan Lopes. Now, long three is good for Neil and Nera. Yeah, I'm sure Nealon can hit that shot when he's open, so Brockton's gonna have to adjust on that one. Oko for two, no good. Abu Kaba tipping the rebound right to Chayton Nara. Foul called. And we are now joined by the newest signee of the Brown University Bears, Kingsley Ajoku DK. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Celebrating National Signing Day just the other day. We were there for it in Principal Wolder's office. So what are you looking forward to and are you soaking up Brockton High Athletics while you still have the time? Right now I'm just trying to enjoy my senior year. You know, I'm committed, everything's said and done. I'm just gonna have a good time with all my brothers on the football team, all my friends, my family, enjoying having my grandmother here. So now it's just about having, I guess, a bunch of senior experiences that'll last a lifetime. One of the best stories out of National Signing that we've heard really in a long time, your grandmother flying all the way over from Nigeria for the week uh, to spend National Signing Day with you and your parents. And what's that experience like to know that someone came halfway around the world to spend some time with you? I guess it just, it signifies the importance of family and love and just how much support I've had throughout my life from my immediate family that I live with and then my family that's across the ocean in Nigeria. And I guess it kind of, it puts into focus like what to worry about. And not always focusing about the football, but also the aspect of my family roots and everything that they've done for me. Now you mentioned family and support. Of course, the Caruso is a big family name in Brockton. And you're going to be uh, on the same campus with a Brockton Community Access commentator alumnus. Miss Jen Happy Feet Caruso. <laughs> What's that like? I know you invited Mr. Peter Caruso to National Signing Day to spend that time with you. Good friends with starting quarterback Matt Caruso. What, what's your relationship with the Caruso family? What's it going to be like uh, having Jen so close to you? Well, the Caruso's, they're a big part of who I am today, where I am today. Everything, all my successes is I, I have to give credit to them in, in every type of way because they've supported me. They've taught me so much. They've become like a second family to me. And having Jen on campus, I mean, that's, that's another thing. I have someone help me out, show me the ropes. And just someone that I can relate to because we're, some, we're from the same place, you know? So I, are, you, are you looking forward to uh, playing college football? I am. Uh, you know, I'm always looking forward to play football. Like I was, my mindset is I, I just want to play. I just want to play ball, you know? And especially that I can play at such a high level in the Ivy League, Division One football is just, I'm just excited to, um, to compete. Well, Kingsley Ajoku DK, again, the newest signee of the Brown University Bears, making the trip about an hour south to Providence. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when I first heard it, uh, Matt, excuse me, I was very proud of uh, my man, I, was Oki? Hmm? How you Ajoku? Ajoku DK. <laughs> Mr. DK, I was very proud of him. And the thing about it, what made it so special, he's going to an Ivy League school. So this young man has some smarts, he's gonna, and he uses smarts and his athletic ability to gain a scholarship here at um, Brown University. And congratulations again. Thank you. Last question from me. If Matt Caruso flips and decides to go back to Princeton, is there a <laughs> rivalry or is there a friendship? Uh, I, it's, it's, it's once we step on the field, oh, yeah, you have no friends. You know, he's on the other team. I told him. If he doesn't end up going to Princeton, he crosses the middle, coming for his head. That's just what it's going to be. Sounds good. Kingsley Ajoku DK, thank you. Good luck at Brown University. And congratulations on your signing. Thank you. Back to action. Durfee with a seven point edge, 20 to 13. Demarche Taylor with the three, trying to change that. Abu Kaba with the rebound off the glass. 
no good miles it's been very very sloppy so far for yeah, both teams right and and one of the problems is you'll see here on, on, on the replay the fast break by um, Durfee but Brockton's shooting nothing but outside shots they're not really working it inside and try to um, get some shots from the inside and also maybe get some of these taller Durfee players a little bit of um, get a few fouls on them but uh, they're just shooting everything outside nobody's hitting Abu Kaba two of two from the stripe 50, 20 to 15 the score Durfee's coach has now lost his voice yep Chayton Nara working against Marcin Louis Charles up top to Nick Salmon. You know, this Durfee team, they're, they're a good sized team. And they right now they seem to be controlling the um, defensive boards as well as offensive boards. Chayton Nara with two seconds on the shot clock, finger rolls it up and in. Miles, you mentioned the size of the Hilltoppers as Brockton commits a turnover. Abu Kabo is a step ahead of the pass. Half yeah. of this team, it seems like, for the Hilltoppers, are starters on the football team. Yeah, and, and they're pretty fast. Good-sized kids. Giving Brockton all kinds of trouble. Nick Salmon loses it. Abu Kaba picks it up. He is fouled pretty blatantly by yeah. Neil and Nera. And, and it seemed like the, it took a little while for him to blow the whistle. But he made the right call. You'll see it right here, the nice block. And Daniel you know, Nera committing that hold that puts Brockton in a bonus situation. Interesting to see that Mr. Nera is not wearing basketball shoes. He's out there in some cross trainers. It looks like number twenty-two. Yeah, you just never know what the kids are going to come with on their feet this day and age. Nabil Ferbler, a perfect example of that. Kaba now 4-4 from the stripe, 22-17. Team Van Puten committing the double dribble. Brockton yeah. takes over and some more unforced errors. Yeah, that was Layton. Kron Harris to Taylor to Taylor back to Taylor. Taylor Run back to Ferbler. Four minutes left to go in the second. Taylor called for the trip. And we'll go back the other way. In the second quarter, and then um, Coach Verdurfi lost his voice. Van Putin. Corner for Nick Salmon. In for Nara to Van Putin. A three is no good at Tenosa Kumbo back in the game. Comes down with Sean. Holding up over to Ferbler. Back to Taylor. Kaba. Kaba for back to Kaba. Driving in the paint. And he turns it over to Chayton Nera. Yeah, Brockton seems a little hesitant. If he is playing good defense. Sam and stopping, giving it over to number Isaiah Morenci. Morenci losing it. And Nick with a ballerina act all the way into the bucket is fouled. Oh, one thing Durfee's doing, Brockton's not doing on offense. Burton, he's moving the, out the basketball. Kind of moving around. Brockton seems stagnant a little bit on the offensive end. Not a lot of people running around without when they don't have the basketball. Oh, Brockton looking to solve some of its shooting woes. Jerese Harris, Sonny Oak and Lola in the game. They replaced, replaced Nabil Ferbler and Demarge Taylor, respectively. Harris, a very good outside shooter. Get back. 2.58 to go in quarter number two, 2.17. Five points. Board to Jerese Harris. His three is no good. Karan Harris with the rebound. He's fouled on his way up on yeah. the putback attempt. He'll be at the stripe. 
Yeah, Harris did a nice job. Got the rebound, positioned himself nicely, got the offensive rebound, and put it right back up, got fouled. That is the second foul. Lorenzi, the sophomore center, comes out in order. Hunter Sam, 31. Harris to a strike. So Proctor is fast. And Putin over to Chayden there. And then for Salmon, for number 15, A.B. Medrano, his three no good. Brockton takes over. Sonny Oak and Lola cross half court. Two and a half to go. Antonosa Kunbor tripped up. Keeps possession. Number four, Van Putin takes it all the way in. And he hits the easy layup. Yeah, that was a good defensive play by the little guard for Durfee. Anticipated it very nicely. That was a Okanola called for uh, Okanola drawing the block. Yeah. Yeah. A second foul called against AB Medrano. Assistant coach Matt Coot not too pleased with that call. Atenosa Kumbor coming down with the rebound. Loose ball to Abu Kaba who is on the floor to Atenosa Kumbor and it. Rolls out of bounds off of Brockton. Durfee takes over. Good hustle by the boxes. They just couldn't come up with the basketball. Chayton there calling up for a man, uh, yes, man on man down low. Ooh, nice no block. Good. Nice block. Okanola coming up with the loose ball. Abu Kaba now. Sending it out to Etinosa Kumbor to Okanlola. Okanlola driving inside, puts up a floater, no good. Chayton Nara coming down with the rebound. Nara up for number 14, Joe Camara. Camara has his shot blocked. Wow. Jace Harris coming up with the loose ball. Up and down the court they go. Harris loses the ball. Two boxers fighting for it, and Sonny Okanlola will be called for the trap. Uh, I, you know, I, I hate that call, but look at this block right here. It was that Harris Karan went up Harris. high. One minute and 20 seconds left to go in the first half. 24-19, Nick Salmon for two, no good. Jerese Harris hands it to Abu Kaba over to Okinlola. Okinlola to Harris, back to Okinlola, over to Karan Harris. Back to Sonny, over to Jerese Harris. Jerese back to Sonny. Sonny to Karan Harris, back to Sonny, back to Jerese. His three is no good, a little bit too long. And Karan Harris punching the ball loose, unable to gain possession for the Brockton Boxers. Brockton stepping up on defense on the offensive side. It is still cold from the outside. 31.9 to go now. Shayton there will be at the line for a one and one shooting situation. The seventh team foul fouled against the boxers in this half. See, and thing is, if uh, Matt, if, if you're a cold offensive shooting team, then that means you have to concentrate on the rebound, getting a second attempt at the shot, because right now you're just getting one attempt and then heading back down the other way. One or two at the line, Abu Kaba ripping down the rebound. On a second and a half difference between shot clock and game clock. Okanlola holding, trying to waste out as much of this clock as possible, Okanlola. Just inside half court. Over to Karan Harris, he thinks he sees a lane off the glass and in. Wow, he wiggled his way through there, he saw the lane took advantage of it, not much, but he took advantage of what he had or what the defense gave him. Nara called for the travel. There will be some time put back on the clock. It'll be interesting to see how much. Uh, 
we're going to rule halftime. So the score at halftime, 25 to 21 miles. So an interesting ending there. Yeah, you know, I didn't get to see the first quarter, but from what I'm seeing is Brockton has, I don't have the stat on the uh, outside shooting, but their outside shooting has been atrocious. And that's why they're down by, uh, luckily only down by four points. If they can, second half, working on the inside and hustle, they really hustled in that, late in that second quarter to bring them back to a, um, a decent score here. But they're going to really have to hustle real hard on the offensive boards in the second half. Miles, beyond the reaming they're about to get from head coach Bob Boeing and clearing their heads, getting the butterflies out for their big three divisional matchup, what do the boxers have to do to to come back and play a decent second half. Yeah, well, again, they're going to have to work it inside, possibly. And I can't see why they can't work it inside. They, they've got some guys just as big as Durfee's team, and they need to work it inside a little bit more, not so much the uh, taking that outside shot. And if they take the outside shot, they must get a rebound. Well, score at halftime, 25-21. to 21. The Hilltoppers of Durfee leading the Brockton Boxers in this big three-divisional matchup. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. and girls basketball fans of all ages welcome back into staff gymnasium for second half action between your Brockton boxers and the Durfee Hilltoppers Demar J Taylor for three right off the bat no good Abu Kaba with a highly contested rebound yeah great tips hustle it, great hustle tips it to Nabil Ferbler to Demar J Taylor to Karan Harris and he finger rolls it around the rim and in Durfee coming into the second half 25 to 21 lead Brockton Cutting that to a one possession game just now, 25-23. Etinosa Kumbar coming up with the steal. He gives it to Ferbler. He takes a long time to shoot a three, and that's no good. Brought down by Neil and Nara. Nick Salmon now out to Chayton Nara. Chayton in, puts up a wild shot, no good. Etinosa Kumbar with the rebound. That was good defense by Kumbar. Kron Harris. Oh, travel. He knew he it too. Thought he, he thought he caught himself. And I say, yeah, that's me, that's me. You see it right here in the replay. Oh no, that was a nice spin move and then the finger roll that you said earlier. And I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson, a big three divisional game and that leads to a big production. This of course is a joint production of the Brockton High School Television Production Club and your favorite Brockton Community Access Sports Team. A lot of players involved in this production. Karan Harris for three, no good. Didn't follow a shot. Demarjay Taylor almost had his head taken off. He puts up a three off the front of the rim. Bounces to Etinosa Kumbor, who was hit like four times. Demarjay Taylor. Out to Harris, his three is good. And Brockton back with the lead, 26 to 25. They got that basket because they hustled on the offensive boards and uh, fought for that basketball and it paid off. Etinosa Kumbor off of Chaitanera off the referee. Wow, but if they're gonna let Brockton have that one, Brockton got away with one right there. Cause that was off uh, Brockton ball player. And the referee. And the referee. In my personal, professional, humble opinion that not many people care about. Yeah, watch, right there. A travel called 
against Brockton. It's nice to see Brockton in the second half step it up on the offensive boards. That's why they're up by one point at the moment with 5.53 on the clock. Nick Salmon coming away with it to Van Putin. To Nera, his two no good. Gets his own rebound, puts up a couple of attempts, no good. Van Putin comes up with a steal. And now Karan Harris with the steal. And a block there by number 13. There is Isaiah Morenci, but in my personal, professional, humble opinion. Great hustle by Harris to, after getting the ball taken from him. He went right back and took it from him. You see it right there on the replay. And then the block. And then rejected. A good hustle by Harris. And that's what the whole team, they have to hustle. And they, they look like they've been hustling. They've been blocking some shots, getting some offensive boards, giving themselves a second opportunity to put the ball in the basket. So cycling back a few plays, Brockton escaped with possession, which ultimately didn't result in any points. If a ball goes out of bounds off of a referee, or the refs are not sure of which team it goes off of, instead of blowing the call, bear with me on this one, I think they should rule a jump ball. But I was going to say the same thing. That should be the correct call, jump ball, if they're not sure. Isaiah Morenci getting a little talking to from the referee. This referee isn't taking much crap. No, not at all. One of the new faces here, of course, you've got Steve Altimus, one of the refs almost every game. You've got some familiar referees, wow. and that's an excellent play by Demarge Taylor, yeah. high off of glass and in. Yeah, that was a circus move right there. And somehow he got the right spin on it, touched the glass, and went in. Shaheen Van Putin. Shade Nera fouled by Abu Kaba. You know, what Brockton, you'll see here on the replay, the uh, acrobatic move by Taylor kind of a scoop shot. But another thing Brockton has to do because a lot of their players have long arms, they need to keep them hands up and limit the passing lane of Durfee. You keep your hands up, you're, you're, it's just guaranteed you're gonna get some steals. Nick Salmon passing to no one in particular. Minus our camera guy, Anthony Jordan. Demarge Taylor to Ferbler. Ferbler back to Taylor. Taylor driving inside. Windmills it. Fouled by any different number of Durfee Hilltoppers. It's going to go against Neil and Nera. Yeah, it's nice to see Taylor take charge and uh, go to the basket a number of times, especially in the se in second half. He's drawing the foul. He's second. Personal foul called against Neil and Nera, and he finds his way to the bench. He comes off momentarily, a little bit of a confusion on the end of the Jeffy Hilltoppers, who's in, who's out. Marcino Louis Charles to Demarge Taylor. To Precious Oko. Oko quiet so far this game. Louis Charles to Taylor. Driving inside to Abu Kaba. Abu Kaba flipping it out to Oko. And a three second violation called against the Boxers. Tough call right there, but it looks like um, maybe number 15 was standing in the um, paint. Possibly. Shaden Nera to Nick Salmon, had a lot of room for a three, instead drives to the rim and tries to hit it, counting in one, meanwhile, for Hunter Salmon. And nice job by Durfee to be in the other guys. Didn't have the basketball, but they got underneath the basket for a possible rebound and uh, took advantage. Chance for a three-point play right here. Salmon does just that, 28 to 28. 
is the score, and Precious Oko didn't follow his shot, got his own rebound, though. Louis Charles for three is good. That's a big sh shot right there by Charles. Brockton three-point edge, 31 to 28, the score, 345 left to go. Brockton go, getting ready to go with the jumbo set. Sonny Okenlola to Jean Glenn Darty coming in. You, you'll see the big three right there. All nets. But the turnover, we just, that Durfee just turned the ball over, and that's because of Brockton's defense. A lot of the guys had their hands up, limit the passing lanes, lane of the Hilltoppers. That's what they have to do. You can see the Hilltoppers got their hands up, limiting the uh, boxes of their passing lane. That should be a boxer ball. It went the wrong way. It looked like it went out of bounds off of the Hilltoppers. Head coach Bob Bowen almost losing his voice. He's well on his way. Nick Salmon driving baseline to his brother Hunter. No good. Sonny Oak and Lola coming down with the rebound. 3.08 to go in the third quarter. Brockton hanging on to that three point edge. Precious Oko to Taylor to Louis Charles to Oak and Lola. To Louis wow. Charles. He's fouled. He takes. Hunter Salmon down with him. Yeah, Durfee's starting to get a little physical. You see it here on the replay. Glenn Darty off the glass, no good. He was fouled. Nice job by Glenn Darty. Even though he missed his shot, it was great effort. He shouldn't be too down on himself. He's at the free throw line. He can make it up right here. But he's going to have to start controlling these boards, too. Neil and Eric called for the push, meanwhile. So number 15, A.B. Medrano, will come into the game. Brendan White, the junior guard, will replace Shaheem Van Putin. Glenn Darty good on his first attempt. One of two, but Brockton gets the rebound. Oak and Lola off the glass and in. That was a yeoman effort. Excellent effort by the big man. Power his way on that rebound. Brockton trying to work a full court press. Durfee breaking that. Chayton Narrow finding a lane and a hole is going to be called against Precious Oko. Yeah, you're going to see the, the offensive boards right there by the big guy. Okanola. Glenn Darty gets in the passing lane off the inbound pass, tipping it to Okanola, who gets it to, uh, to Taylor. Marge Taylor, and he puts it off the glass. Boy. And then Brockton now with a eight point edge. That was a beautiful transition play right there by the boxes. Hunter Salmon hitting the floor. Okanola coming down with the rebound. Over to Marcino Louis Charles. And he loses it to Hunter Salmon. Up and down the court they go. Shaden Nero all the way in off the glass. No good, but he was followed by Sonny Okinola. And Shaden Nero will be at the charity stripe for two shots. Yeah, the pace is getting really rapid. You can see right here, nice transition ball right there by the boxes. Easy two. And that's because of the aggressive defense we've seen in the second half by the boxes. Like you say, Coach Bowen probably laid in on them on, in, at halftime in the locker room. And they came out, like, came out like gangbusters, really hustling on both ends of the uh, court. And you can see two of two at the line, and Durfee calling a timeout. Thirty-six to thirty, Brockton with a six-point edge. Two oh nine to go in the third quarter. Miles, we said it right before halftime. Brockton needs to clear their heads. They need to figure out what's wrong in their offensive game, and they need to fix it. And they need to fix it fast. It looks like they're off to a good start. Yep, their heads been cleared. Coach Bowen cleared their heads down in the locker room. They've come out, look like a di totally different team now, hustling on the offensive boards, hustling on the defensive boards. 
and um, making some nice steals, playing some good defense, and capitalizing off the defense, making points at the other end. And uh, that's why they have a six-point lead here with 2.09 left in this uh, third quarter. But they have to keep up that intensity because now Durfee's really amped up the intensity a little bit. They've gotten a little physical out there with their ball play, so Brockton has to keep up the um, intensity themselves uh, going into this fourth quarter. Well, for both the Brockton High Men's Basketball Team and the Brockton Lady Boxers, the Big Three Division will be decided on Tuesday night against the New Bedford Whalers. The girls will be at home. We will have that game for you on Brockton Community Access. Precious Oko for three is good. A big shot by there, by um, Oko. Clutch shot. Shaden Nero with the long Hail Mary. Just a bit too long for Brendan White. Yeah, you'll see it on the replay, the ball movement. Long three is good, nothing but bottoms. So it looks like Brockton's found their, their outside shooting a little bit. Taylor to Okinola, back to Taylor. Ooh, nice in. Nice pass inside by Taylor. Glenn Darty was fouled on his way in and up to the basket. Yeah, Glenn Darty's doing a nice job moving without the basketball. You'll see it right there, the dish inside. Good defense, but Darty did the right thing. Put it right in. Now he's being rewarded at the free throw line. That's what he has to do is the big man back and forth, back and forth. Outside, inside. Don't get called for the three-point play. Hopefully sooner or later somebody will see you open. And Taylor did. And the boxes capitalized. Glenn Darty, two of two at the charity strike. 41 to 30. Brockton, biggest lead of the night. 11 points, looking to add to that is Sonny Oak and Lola, who loses it, regains composure. To Glenn Darty and the one-handed slam, the explanation point. Great, great pass by the big man to, the, to his big man teammate. Got the crowd going. Nick Salmon looking for the alley-oop. Yep. Let's see it right here, Matt. First the steal. Oak and Lola running out of room fast, finds Glenn Darty and the one-handed jam, and the crowd is fired up. And the great thing about that, again, Glenn Darty moving without the basketball. Came right down, was fed nicely, and took advantage with the dunk. Nick Shannon good on his first attempt. One more look at the dunk from the under-the-basket angle. With confidence. With confidence. You saw the crowd react on a Friday night here at Staff Gymnasium. Big three competition doesn't get any better than this. Nick Salmon, two of two with the line, 43 to, 30, uh, 43 to 32 the score. Brockton on top by 11, one minute to go in the third quarter. Tariq Yaya to Glenn Darty to Oko, his three is no good. Nick Salmon coming down with the rebound for the Hilltoppers. Salmon to Chayton Nera. Chayton working against two boxers. Finds Salmon all the way across. And a three is in. And he couldn't get much more in than that without sure counting. Couldn't, sure couldn't. Demarge Taylor driving inside. Tries to kick it to Yaya. Yaya to Oak and Lola between the legs. Loses it a few times off the glass. No good. And Bob Bowen very smartly, very alertly calling a timeout to keep possession as... The ball was ping-ponging all around the boxer zone. Yeah, good description, uh, and it was a good timeout. You'll see it right here. The action in and out. In, out, in, out. Yes. Back in again. Back out again. And Taylor loses it to Yaya, and Yaya loses it to Okinlola. Okinlola can't ever gain composure, and it's at about that time that Bob Bowen calls the timeout. Yeah, you can see Coach Bowen. Yelling to the ref, time out, time out, as Oaken went to the, um, was in the red paint at the time with the basketball. 20.8 seconds to go, 16 on the shot clock. Again, Brockton up by 11, 43 to 32 over big three divisional rival, the Durfee Hilltoppers. And both boys and girls basketball will have the big three division in the automatic playoff berth decided on Tuesday night. 
The Lady Boxers will be here at Staff Gymnasium. Precious Oko in for Tijan Glenn Darty out to Taylor. Taylor trying to waste out enough clock and he puts it off the glass and in. No shot clock, and eight seconds to go. Now five. Neil and Nara out to Nick Salmon. Two seconds on the clock, all the way in off the glass, no good. Tips his own rebound off the backboard and that does it for the third quarter. Brockton enters the last eight minutes with a 13 point edge, 45 to 32 the score. Miles, they came out swinging and they had a 26 point third quarter. Yeah, and that's because of the hustle on defense. Defense was the key and they decided to start jumping for that rebound on both ends of the court, and that paid off dramatically. Uh, Taylor, good job of working the ball inside, driving to the basket, or passing it out to, the, uh, to one of his um, players from the outside, and them hitting some big three-pointers in that third quarter. And that's why you have this 45-32 um, lead at the moment. Uh, big, big name in that third quarter was uh, Okendola. He really stretched out there. Also, Glenn Darty did a yeoman job. Uh, it's really just been a team effort in that third quarter, but it's just nice to see some of these guys start getting some rebounds, uh, making some big defensive plays and capitalizing on those with some points at the other end. Well, as is tradition at the end of the third quarter, we want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds of tonight's big three divisional festivities here at Staff Gymnasium. At the helm, manning the switcher tonight. No, it is not Paul Mandeville. We just lost half the audience. It is the one, the only Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Right next to him on instant replay is John Pinto. Right now nicknameless, but not for long. Next to him we have Danny Steele Jr. on graphics and audio. Up top, Tariq Yaya for three, no good. The president, the doctor, the big tuna, Patrick Lees, the head of the video department of Massasoit Community College, Patrick Lees. Right behind me, and his camera is on right now, is Danny Steele Sr. Oaken Lola for three, no good. Lynn Tartaglia is up there. Of course, the head of the Brockton High Television Production yes. Club. And speaking of BHS TV Club, that's the abbreviated version, is Anthony Jordan, who is on the camera to our far left. Yeah, they're doing a great job this evening. This, this. Of course, after the game, we'll be talking to head coach Bob Bowen to get his this. thoughts on, it's been a very impressive comeback. They were down Six nothing, and no, then they tied it up at six, then they were down by as much as eight. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. he was <laughs> grabbed by the, it was definitely a mismatch. Grabbed his putting it loosely, he was bear hugged from bear behind. Bear hugged, yes, yes. Little, little guy just wanted a hug. Just wanted some love. Glenn Darty inching his way closer to the basket, gets his own rebound off the glass, no good, but there's fouled on his way up and he goes back to the strike for two shots. Wow, what a great job posting up by Glenn Darty. Good defense, but he posted up very well to get a shot off, got his own rebound, hustled hard, put it, tried to put it back up again and got fouled. Six and a half to go. Brockton still up by 13 points, 45 to 32. Glenn Darty missing his first attempt. One of two at the line was Glenn Darty. 46 32 the score. Brockton up by 14 now. Nick Salmon driving baseline, trying to create some space. That should be an up and down, and it is against Nick Salmon. Great defense there. Are they gonna call, they're going to call jump ball on that. 
I don't know how that ends up as a jump ball, but it did. Great defense by the boxes. Either way. Again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Big Game Miles Jackson, bringing you all the action in this big three divisional matchup. Coron Harris off the glass and in. Yeah, nice fake by Harris. Then went right to the basket and kissed it off the glass. And a timeout called by the Durfee Hilltoppers. Head coach, Jameson Guimond. So 6.05 to go, Brockton up now by 16, 48 to 32. We're gonna see that layup by Karan Harris off the glass and then not much. What was sweet about that, Matt, he took Chain's hands, put it in his left hand and kissed it off the glass nicely. Found the lane and there was not much hilltopper defense. And Harris again found an open Highway lane to the basket, and he went down. Going the speed limit, of course. Of course. There's been some questionable calls tonight, but one of my favorite things about this referee crew is they've been very succinct with timeouts. Wow, uh, the, uh, so Durfee, Durfee took too called, long. Yeah, they were just called for a five-second inbounding violation. This, this coach for uh, Durfee is about ready to explode. And they're still exploding at the ref for that five-second violation that was called. A few expletives. The word clowns come out a few times. <laughs> Use your imagination, folks. We don't have a mic pointed in that direction anymore. We did until I thought better of it. Narrow one-handing it for Morenci. Morenci over to Van Putin. In for Salmon, he goes down hard. Good defense right there by the boxes. They're not making it easy for Durfee, which is the game plan when you got a, uh, what, 16 point lead. You still make the opponent work for their shots. Because if you don't, you might let them back into the ball game. Shaman good on his first no good on his second attempt. Five and a half to go, 48 to 33. 15 point edge for the boxers. Demarge Taylor over to Abu Kaba. Kaba in for Harris. Harris, no good. Out of bounds off of Durfee. Brockton will have 17 on the shot clock. Now, Durfee's in the situation where every free throw, free throw is critical being down by so many points. They can ill afford to miss any free throw shots from here on in. Brockton now in a bonus shooting situation for the next five minutes and 16 seconds. Abukaba is at the line for a one and one. That is the fourth personal foul on Neil and Nara. Meanwhile, Kaba missed his one attempt. Chayton narrow with it. Chayton working his way in, flying all the way to the basket, and he's fouled on his way through the air. Yeah, they're gonna call it on E.T. E.T. called for the hold. And Chayton narrow with the very big two shots ahead of him. Two at the line, E.T. able to keep it in to Demarge Taylor. Taylor streaking up the court. 
Wow, he was I, gonna be counted in one. He looked pretty planted yeah. to me. Well, you know what? It it looked like Taylor went around him. It was very little contact, but you'll see it right here. See, he went right around barely, if anything. I don't know, that, that, that was a tough whistle right there. I think it should have been a, a no call. The ball carrier try, definitely uh, tried to avoid him, barely touched him. Merrick to number 20, uncontested three, comes up short. That was Tyrone Watkins. Taylor on the other side, no good. Arukaba with the offensive board off the glass. And Dylan Nera comes down with this one to his brother Chayton. Chayton blocked by E.T. and Cron Harris is called. I'll tell you, Durfee got a break right there because that was automatic two to Harris streaking down the court. That is the fifth foul against Neil and Nera. He has fouled out of this game. His replacement, Gio Camara. Nick Saban to Cheaton there. 4.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Brockton up 51 to 33. 18 point edge. Nick Salmon driving baseline, reverse layup, and that was pretty nice. Yeah, good drive by um, the Durfee Hilltopper. Jewish Harrison for Karan Harris. Karan to Abu Kaba, top of the key. A long two is good. Yeah, he didn't waste no time. Once he got the ball, he shot it all in one motion. You might see it here on the replay. Oh, we saw the drive right there. Nice drive by the Hilltopper. And another timeout called by the head coach of the Durfee Hilltoppers. 3.45 to go again. A mad dog, Matt Nelson, joined alongside big game Miles Jackson. Big three divisional action here at Staff Gymnasium. Yeah, you'll see it right here. Harris to Kaba, long two is good. See, he didn't waste any time. He was set. Nice shot right there just beyond the uh, free throw line. Easy two. And the referee looked over here at the Durfee bench like, look, you don't want to get first called horn, again. First horn. Wow, even the assistant coaches, some uh, things come out of his mouth that uh, not all the kids in, uh, could, could hear that. I'm just I'm listening to the speech on the on the Derpy sideline. It's not pretty. No, it isn't. Definitely R-rated. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it it does have to be frustrating. You, you have the lead. The at Derpy's, halftime. The coach has said it. You scored ten points in the in the second, second half. half. Right. We're a quarter and a half through the second half. A one-handed slam, and that's. Not, not what Durfee needed right now. Well, that, that's basically how it's been in this second half of Durfee. Mr. Easy Dunk. Nice, and Now nice blocked team. by Etanosa Kumbo was Nick Simmons. He's a little bit slow to get up on the other end of the court. A steal by Tyrone Watkins. Kamara for three, no good. Jerese Harris comes down with it. Jerese throwing it up, landing on it, and he took a tumble. Yeah, he did, he came down pretty hard. You'll see the missed dunk right there. As if Durfee's coaches needed another thing to talk about. He should have just put a layup. Layup would have went in. Abu Kaba for a long two is good. Ogun Lola getting ready to come back in the game. Two and a half to go, 55 to 35, Brockton. With the explanation point, the 20 point lead over the Durfee Hilltoppers. 
Tyrone Watkins, short floater, no good. Brockton coming down with it. At the North Sakumbo to Dimaje Taylor. Taylor off the glass and in will not count. He was fouled prior to the shot. Tyrone Victor, the biggest member of the Brockton Boxers. At six foot nine and number 13, that is Isaiah Morenzi has fouled out of this game. Durfee, oh, they got a bench players. Taylor missing his first attempt. Brockton now in a double bonus. But Tyrone Victor on the floor. 6'9", sophomore. Demarge Taylor, one of two at the line, and Marcus Azor comes in to replace him. Quick three, in and out, no good. Victor tapping rebound to Jerese Harris. Harris across half court, one handing for Glenn Darty. Glenn Darty to Victor, and he went oh. up. Didn't quite get to the rim, but hey, what was great about was that? Good. Yeah, and he was moving without the basketball. Nice job by Glenn Darty to defeat it to the big man. One big man feeding it to the other big man. Nick Salmon trying to set up the Hilltoppers' offense. Salmon bouncing it, taken away by Glenn Darty. Glenn Darty all the way in, missed oh. the one-handed slam. He would have made it if he laid it in. Now Tyrone Victor tripped up after he got the block. Here's that missed slam. He just jumped half a second too early. Yeah. And Nick Salmon has come out of the game for the Hilltoppers. And the travel called against number 23, Felix Vargas. I think, Matt, one of the keys to this Brockton second half um, massacre was when Brockton started double teaming um, and, and the, the full court press, forcing um, the Hilltoppers to make some mistakes. Put a lot of pressure on their uh, ball handlers. Victor all the way in, no good, gets his own rebound off the glass and in. Nice job by Victor. Made the easy two right off the glass and in. One minute to go in the game. Glenn Darty trying to block this one away. Unsuccessful. Oaken Lowell comes up with the steal. Marcus Azor now 45. Azor steps back, gives it to Jerese Harris. Harris back to Azor. Azor over to Marcino Louis Charles. Back to Jerese. Jerese over to Marcus. Azor with 10 seconds left on the shot clock to Jerese Harris. Oh, nice Harris dish. Victor down low off the glass and in. Pretty dish by number 13, Harris. Food the defense. Easy two for the big man. Ten seconds to go. No shot clock. Durfee has it. Felix Vargas with it. His last second three is no good. Count the bucket for Hunter Salmon. The final score, 62 to 37. Brockton getting a big, big three divisional win. Yeah, and that was because, again, defense, the last time we saw Brockton out here, they won because of defense. They really um, turned it on in that second half, Matt, with, a, with the press, a lot of pressure on um, Durfee's um, guards, and they failed there because Brockton's defense was really tough. And, and they turned the they turned the defense into points. What do you think they did to turn it around and come up with a big win? Well, they they hustled. Besides playing defense, they hustled when they played defense, and that put a lot of pressure on the Durfee team to um, try to score some points. So you know, if, if you hustle, follow your shots, and get a rebound on your offensive boards, you're able to do that. So now we're getting ready to have Matt talk to our coach, Coach Bowen. Matt, it's all yours. We're with victorious head coach Bob Bowen. Coach, started off slow, 
You put in a few different uh, a few different players, got the right combinations. You came in strong in the second half. Yeah, we did. We got a nice lift off the bench as usual. Uh, Sonny Okanola and Tyshawn uh, Do Glenn Doherty had very, very good games there. They brought a lot of energy. Uh, the starting team, when we pressed to start the second half, also got a nice jump on them. We had to press tonight, though. It was a, a tough, a tough, tough first half. Very tough first half. What was said in the locker room at halftime? Well, we said that, you know, this is for the big three to win the big three, that we've got to pick it up. That Durfee's getting very excited because they see they have a chance to beat us. And that we're really going to have to work hard to be sure they don't. You got New Bedford on Tuesday. What's the game plan going in there? I would say it's the same thing. Be aggressive, uh, work our size on them, get some baskets inside, and if we need to, we'll press them too. Well, 62 to 37, the final score. Brockton getting the big three divisional win over the Durfee Hilltoppers. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. And go.